Financial transparency is all the rage, but some First Nations are now fighting a law that requires them to show how the money given to the reserve is spent. And a number of groups have decided they're going to fight it in court. Let me read off to you from the news release. First Nations from Treaties 4, 6, and 7 say this tactic of financial transparency is designed to force local compliance by, uh, to an unjust law by denying families access to essential programs and services. Rick Saluton, Toronto Star columnist, joins us now from Toronto. Rick, uh, financial transparency, everybody wants to know how the tax money's being spent, how their money's being spent. Good idea, bad idea for these groups to, uh, to challenge this and say no. In principle, I think financial transparency like motherhood or goodness uh, is a good idea. This is a terrible way to do it. In fact, there are loads of uh, rules already in place. Um, these uh, uh, these um, nations have to uh, do audits. They have to submit them. Um, the department uh, publicizes them. Um, this is a way of actually exercising a kind of a moral superiority in a situation where what they should really be doing is finding uh, better modes of governance on the reserves. Well, I, I think that's part of the, the design here. No uh, way. No way. It's got nothing to do with that. It's just shaming the people. There's no, um, uh, I mean, there, you know, there, there was, for, I'll give you an example. Under the Kelowna Accord, there was going to be a First Nations Auditor General. That's a kind of a good idea. Uh, and it would be something that um, moved along the lines of self-government for First Nations. It was something everybody could agree with. But this government threw it out, uh, along with the Kelowna Accord and much else. All right. Well, let me read to you from um, what the Shushwap First Nations said, uh, because, uh, sorry. All right. We'll read this first. This is Erica Meek. She's a spokesperson. Yeah. There's yeah. the Shushwap. Um, they said the First Nations Transparency Act came in and it actually showed what the previous council was doing, spending all our money on places that were not for the people. That's Barb Cote. She is a council member. Yeah. They threw out the whole council except for Barb Cote because Absolutely. they were all family members and they were paying themselves huge salaries. They didn't know that until this act came in and the people could actually say, hey, wait a minute. I know, but Brian, all you've got there is uh, one example of corruption uh, and nepotism, which you find across the board in Canadian society, really probably in human society. Uh, and I understand people being so aggravated by that one thing that they're willing to overlook the way that this um, warps and actually moves in a regressive direction the relations between uh, um, First Nations and the rest of us. Uh, okay, uh, I mean, there's more examples. There's Chief Ron Giesbrecht out of um, uh, Coquitlam area, who was, he's the guy that made $900,000 last year. Yeah, I know, but you uh, just, yeah. you know, examples like that that the people on the reserve wouldn't know about. So how is this regressive? Well, they, if the people on the reserve didn't know, the money was coming in from Ottawa, it's being spent in places that the people don't approve of, and they have no way of knowing because there was no structure in place. I think you've just bought the government line, Brian. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, because there were these, uh, I mean, these are cases of corruption. Like I say, it does exist elsewhere. You it know, it we, exists we've, everywhere. We've it's it's small... why I support it at, at the federal level, at the provincial level, at the municipal level. Of course it does. There's corruption all the time. There are, you know, and you have to find ways to deal with them. But, um, but the Native peoples have a huge uh, uh, burden of regulation and reporting already. Sheila Fraser, when she was Auditor, Auditor General, said they are, they are burdened with over-reporting. It takes their attention away from uh, things they should be doing. Um, what they're looking for, but, but look, you know, I think we're missing, the. I, I know what you think is the point. Here's what I think is the point. The core of the uh, situation between um, uh, the Canadian uh, public at large and the First Nations it has got to do with um, uh, some sort of equality and self-government. And this, uh, that's what, what everything has to move towards. And uh, a decent amount of methods of, of self-government would include this kind of uh, auditing and um, transparency. This moves exactly in the opposite direction of, um, of paternalism, and it also gives the illusion of doing uh, something about the situation with the First Nations when, in fact, nothing or very little is being done. They won't do anything Look, about, uh, about murders 
of Native women. They won't do anything about oh, Native right. education. The clearance rate, you know, we've been over these stats. The clearance rate of the murdered and missing Aboriginal women is the same as the population at large. And, and look, we do profile reserves that work on this program as well. I was out a little while ago talking to Chief Darcy Bear at Dakota, uh, Whitecap uh, so First you think Nation, you've got and he said outside. transparency is, is key, and that's why he brought it in in his reserve from day one. Yeah, and it depends what kind of transparency, but the essence has got to be respecting people and respecting, in this case, their uh, not just their individual rights, but their um, peoplehood rights or their national rights. And this right. moves, in, uh, in general, in the opposite direction. All right, Rick, great talking as always. My Share your thoughts, facebook.com slash Brian Lilly. Stick around, more to come.